What's up, my friends? Jen Hoi, Fiorator, Reality One, Group Impact. So, with many of us um, locked down at home, I thought it'd be fun for us to kind of rearrange the home, rearrange furnitures at home, just kind of brighten up the mood, something we can do as part of a family together, maybe even this weekend. So, that said, I've brought on local staging experts, um, Louis and Emily from Green Door Home Staging, to share with us some tips or some tricks um, for us to rearrange our home. So that's it. Louise and Emily, go ahead and introduce yourselves. Well, I'm Louise Morris and I started Green Door Home Staging about five or six years ago. I work with my daughter, Emily, um, who has been super wonderful to work with. She handles all the technology and great design work, great ideas. And we love working with builders, with um, people that flip houses, homeowners, whatever we can do to help your house show better on the market. That's what we do. Perfect. So let's jump right into the question. What is the number one rule you advise all of us to do when we arrange or rearrange furnitures at home? I would say the first things that you want to think about when you're looking to move your furniture is that you want it to be open, you want it to be comfortable, and you want there to be a clear walkway through the room. You never want to have too much furniture blocking the walkway. I mean, especially for staging, one thing that we try to avoid is walking into the back of a piece of furniture. Just because it's not, it's not attractive, it's not appealing to look at necessarily. So we want to avoid looking at the back of a piece of furniture. Um, right now, something to say about when you're your furniture is that you want it to be super functional so if you're going to be spending all your time there you don't want to put it in a way that you're craning your head to look at the tv or something like that in staging we don't frequently use tvs or faux tvs um so most of the time your focal piece is artwork above the fireplace or um if it's more of a galley rectangular living room we'll have two couches facing each other or a couch and then two chairs facing that couch. So um, if you want to take over. <laughs> yeah, I usually like to figure out what the focal point of the room is um, with my own home decorating. And unfortunately, that's usually the TV. <laughs> um, I, I don't love the look of the TV hung over the fireplace, but it, it, does, it, it does help out with the focal point. So you've got your beautiful fireplace and then you've got your TV over the top of that. So then you can kind of group your furniture around that. And you want to make sure you create comfortable conversation areas. So nothing that's too far away from each other. If you have a coffee table in front of you, it should be no more than 18 inches away. So you can reach over to put your coffee or your drink or whatever on it. So you want to be comfortable. So you really want to think about being comfortable in your living room, being focused on you know, what you like, what you're doing in that room. Perfect. Great tips. I'm <laughs> looking at my back of my furniture all day. Might need to change that too. <laughs> so, many people are. <laughs> right. So, okay, like many of us, we possibly have a living room with like a picture window, a larger window with a lot of natural light coming in. So that say with, with a room like this, what would you recommend to do? Well, I would recommend not placing the furniture right in front of the picture window. A window is a great feature to have in a home and you want to be able to walk up to that window to look out of the window. It's not always feasible because if it's a smaller room or if it's a galley kind of straight on room, um, but maybe you want to break it up. So if, if you have picture window on one side, a wall on the other, and then say your fireplace and TV is at the end, I would break it up with maybe chairs versus a heavy bulky sofa or love seat. I would have maybe two upholstered chairs so it kind of breaks up the window. So you still have that, that airy space that you can appreciate the window. Um, and we all have to work with our, in our own constraints of how the living room is, but I would definitely try not putting anything in front of the window if possible or whatever you do, have it be lighter. Hmm. Okay, that's good. Okay. That's good. Now what about second living room something like in a finished basement that's less naturalized it's just more like four walls maybe like a stairs coming down in a, in a finished basement what's uh what's some tips there 
Well, as if this is possible, as far as painting goes, you want to have the wall colors be as light as possible, um, especially if it, you're not getting that same natural light. And then you want to bring in as many table lamps, floor lamps, as I mean, not in abundance, but just enough to give you that warm feeling down there because basements are usually colder as temperature goes anyway. So it's whatever you can do to make it feel warm and light down there, you're going to want to do. Um, again, if replacing furniture is an option, then you're going to want to go with a lighter couch sectional set. Um, and then if it's, if it's like LVP, LVT flooring, you're going to want to put an area rug down there too. Okay, great. So LVP, LVP, luxury vinyl plank and luxury vinyl tile, basically hard surface flooring. Mm -hmm. um, okay, now one final question. Is there anything that you have always seen clients do that possibly we don't really want to do? We should, you can just change up for the long run. We see a lot of things that we want to change for people, but um, <clears throat> I would say too much furniture or the wrong furniture or a lot of brown, people kind of get stuck in that. So you've got your hardwood floor, maybe your cabinets are espresso colored. Um, that's not an uncommon um, combination. So then you think, well, my furniture all has to be dark brown. So then you buy the dark brown kind of leather, faux leather recliner couches with the drink holders. And then maybe your rug is dark and then you've got this dark wooden table. So your room becomes really, really dark and you lose the contrast entirely, which is something that you definitely want as a design element. Okay. So if you've already gone ahead and bought this furniture and now you're, you know, obviously we don't want you to, everybody to go out and buy new furniture, you can do things to lighten it up. You can, maybe you can change out your area rug to a lighter area rug. Maybe you can add um, some light colored pillows. You, again, you don't want to throw your dark brown pillows on your dark brown couch, but we see that. So you can add in lighter cream colored neutral pillows. You can add in some faux greenery that adds a little, or real greenery if you're good at keeping it alive, that adds some nice life to it. Um, we also see people hanging their pictures too high. Their artwork is too high a lot. So when you're thinking about hanging your artwork, you want to focus on the center of the artwork being at eye level. So ranging between about 57 to 64 inches would be the center of your artwork and then you kind of base things off of that. Another thing is making sure that your area rug is large enough for the room. Mm -hmm. We'll often see a large open concept living space and people will just have a small five by seven room. So it'll just be floating kind of in the middle of their um, furniture layout. And one thing that you want, you want the rug to be large enough to define the space, especially with open concept. So something that helps in defining the space say you have an eight by ten or nine by twelve rug you want at least the front corners of um, each piece of furniture to be on that rug so the front feet of your couch are just at the edge of that rug um, and any chairs or console tables the same that kind of just really defines the area we always say no flying carpets got it no flying carpets i like that okay mm -hmm. perfect now, this is great. This is awesome um, insights. You know, something great fun that we can all do, especially this weekend. It's mm -hmm. going to be rainy, so we might as well stay inside and kind of lighten up the mood, brighten up everything, right? Yes. Yeah. So, how do we reach out to you in case we need, in case we have further questions, in case we need staging assistance? Well, we're very active on social media platforms. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram just under the name of our business, which is Green Door Home Staging. Um, you should be able to connect with us there, or you can always email me, which is greendoorhomestaging at gmail.com. So those are great ways to get a hold of us. We also have a website, same thing, Green Door Home Staging. Nice, very <laughs> nice. You can, you can send us messages there. You can see some of our work. We, you can see a lot of work on Facebook and Instagram also. And we love to, you know, meet with our local people and, and help them out in all kinds of ways, design, getting them ready for their, um, to put it on the market, staging to live, whatever they like, um, we're, we're here to help. And we can do a lot of virtual stuff right now too. Right. That's important. Technology is 
taken over, which is good. Yeah. 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 Um, so there you go. Awesome. Now have fun rearranging. Yeah. Stay safe. Wash your hands and uh, have some fun. Peace. <laughs>